In the previous lesson, we took a very naive implementation on handling different fields. Let's review that right now. In our press file parser, let's walk through process fields. Process fields takes each entry inside this data and tries to match it to some sort of logic for every single field. So we've taken this if and else if, and if we added a new field type, we'd have to say else if again, and if we added another one, we'd have to do the same over and over and over. So our tests are currently passing. Let's run those. PHP unit, everything's at green. So we're gonna use the confidence that we have in those tests to guide our refactor. What I'm actually gonna do is erase this all together. We're gonna start from scratch again because that implementation is really not going anywhere. So let's talk everything out before we get started. What I wanna have is a dedicated class for each field type that we are currently accepting. So in the case of the previous example, we were working with dates. So let's start with that one. We'll have a class date and I wanna call a process method on it. And to that process method, I'm gonna pass in field and value. Now field and value at this point, field is equal to date and value is equal to May 14th, 1988. That's what we're passing through. We'll have access to both the field type and the value. And what we're gonna do is from that class, I need to return an array. And that array will have to be something like date and then bring back that carbon logic, carbon parse, and we're gonna pass through value, right? As that's what we're expecting back. So this array will have to get merged to this data, which is also an array. Let's take it one step at a time. Let's start with this date class. In my source directory, I'm going to make a new directory and I'm gonna call it fields. Inside this directory, I'm gonna have a class for each of the field types that we're gonna be accepting. So let's make a new PHP class and I'm gonna call it date. Namespace, vitgonvt, press, fields. Okay, now we know that we're gonna need a public static function called process. That's what we did in our wishful thinking. We were calling this process class. And in this process class, we know we're gonna return some sort of array. At the same token, we know that we're accepting a type and a value. So we know that our array will need to have the key of type, which in this particular case is date, and that needs to be matched up to a carbon parse, and we're gonna pass through value. Now we know that this logic works because we used it in our previous implementation. So let's go back here. Okay, so we got this part and we are returning this. So this date class theoretically works, but how do we call it? How do we dynamically call it? Let's start with an if statement, just for now. I promise you we'll get rid of it. But if field triple equals to date, then at this point we need to find if the class exists. But before we can do that, we need to figure out what the fully qualified namespace is. So let's start with a die and dump here, just so that we can get started. So in this string here, let's write it out. Vic gonvt press fields. And then we're looking for dates, but we can't hard code that because that may change. So we're gonna concatenate at that point our field. Where is this coming from? This is coming from this class right here. Namespace, vitgonvt, press, fields, and the class name is date. Let's run that test one more time. And we are getting the correct thing with the exception that this is not capitalized. Laravel has a nice helper function called title case, which I think will be perfect for this case. Title case, and we pass that through, and let's try it one more time. And there we go we have a fully qualified path to our class. Okay, let's actually save that string and we'll call it class. And so what do we actually need to check? Well, we need to check if the class exists, but furthermore, we need to make sure that we can call a process method on it. So let's start with class exists. So if 
class exists. And we're going to pass through that class variable. And method exists. And we're going to be looking for that method inside this class. And the method that we're looking for is process. So if all of that passes, then we can safely call that class and statically call a process method on it and pass through our field and our value. Let's die and dump that right now and see what we get back. So we see that we're getting back that carbon instance. Now just for sanity check, I'm going to go ahead and comment this out and see what we get instead. We see we're getting null. All right, so we're in the right place. Let's bring this code back. So now we need to take this array and merge it into all of the data that we have already. So what we're going to do is we're going to replace this data. We're going to override that completely with the results of array merge starting with this data. So our starting data set and we're going to merge that with the results of whatever happens inside this process method inside this dynamic class. Now that we have this date working, I want to narrow it down to just a date test. A date field gets parsed. I'm going to copy that name. I'm going to come back here, PHP filter, and we're back to green. Now just for sanity check, let's go ahead and comment this one more time and run that test one more time and it fails. And if we bring that back, it passes. Okay. So at this stage, we can actually get rid of this altogether because what's going to happen is that it's going to check this field over and over. But remember, we have this class exists and method exists on it. So if there is no matching class, then nothing happens. So we can actually get rid of that. We can get rid of that and this, and we can bring this back one indentation and run our test one more time. And we're still at green. And now let's run our full test suite. So remember that in the previous lesson, we changed the body and we're actually parsing the body now. So of course that is failing now. So it's very simple now because all we have to do is add a new class and whatever name we use for that class will be the field. So let's go ahead and save as body, capital B, rename this to body. We don't need carbon. And what are we going to be returning here? We're going to be returning markdown parser and we're going to call the parse method on it and we're going to pass value to it. So when this loop comes around and field is equal to body, it's going to look for a class inside our vicgon press fields and then body as a title case. That's why the B is capital. And then if it finds that class and that class has a method called process, then whatever the results of that call is, we're going to merge it with the already existing this data. Okay, let's try our test one more time and we're green. I think this implementation of process fields is infinitely better than it was before in the previous episode with if statements. The very nice thing about this is that every time we want to accept a new field type, all we have to do is make sure that we have a class with the proper name. Furthermore, with this implementation, we're actually not limited to just passing back an array with a single entry on it. We can even do something like parsed at carbon, and we'll call the now method on it. Assuming that we want to make sure that we have the current time that this was parsed at, maybe that's something that we want to be able to show to our users. So I do want to show you that at work, so I'm actually going to just die and dump this data and let's run this test right here php unit dash dash filter and there we go we have that parse that field now if we added even another field foo we'll set that equal to bar there it is so as i mentioned before using array merge gives us infinite possibilities on what can happen inside each of these classes. Later down the road, we're actually going to get pretty complex with our logic inside this process field and how big of a difference is going to make in writing cleaner code.